Hi there, uh, another Hewton Home video. Uh, we've had some requests from some of our past videos uh, about some close-ups on the edge geometry and how blades actually cut. So I'm going to explain a few different types of tools and how they work. We'll start off with the straight knife Scandi grind. So the first thing, with a, this is a cross-section of a blade. Uh, flat bevels, this is what a Scandi grind is um, characterized by approximately 25 degrees uh, included angle. Uh, great thing about this is if you've got the bevels flat, they'll engage with the flat surface and when you carve along uh, you can throw up a chip and the bevels will actually guide the cut. Uh, it's a very nice way to cut and it's if, it, if you've got the bevels flat, it's relatively easy to maintain, but as soon as you get curve in it, uh, it's quite difficult to keep flat. And most Scandi grinds, even if you think you've got a flat bevel, there's going to be some degree of convexing in it, which is, which is okay. You can cope with that. Where you really get problems is if you get a micro bevel. So it's not so much that the whole length of the bevel is curved, but it's very, it's rolled, the, the edge is uh, slightly rolled over. So to make the edge engage now, I would have to hold the blade up like this. And at this point, it's actually quite unstable. There's no, no guiding effect from the bevel. And the bevel will actually tend to want to jump out. It won't, it could dig in, but uh, it's more likely to skip out. Uh, it's much more difficult to take a flat cut with a, a micro bevel. So one way to avoid that is to, is to hollow grind. Now, I say hollow grind, but actually this isn't, in my view, a hollow ground edge because we've still got a, a as far as the wood's concerned, it's still a flat bevel. The actual edge itself is not a hollow. This is a flat surface and that's a flat surface. So you still have the guiding effect. It's just that the center of the bevel has been removed, which makes it easier to sharpen. Um, because you're sharpening between two flats in a similar way to the tram line system I use on my spoon blades. Um, but it will, it will be much easier to keep flat and I think you're more likely to be able to feel the edge or feel the second back of a bevel locate when the blade goes to flat. Uh, and this is a much easier blade to maintain. Can be issues actually putting a hollow in yourself, but once you have a hollow grind blade, keeping it sharp and keeping it flat is much easier. So that is a very good solution to a Scandi grind. Okay, so we've covered straight blades. Now we're going to look at curved blades and hollowing. Uh, this is a representation of a spoon bowl. It's, it's a bit deep for an eating spoon, but for a, a ladle or something, it's a fair representation. If you were to use a blade with a flat grind, the Scandi grind in a spoon bowl, you can see that the edge is either going to be digging in or it's going to be bouncing across the back of a the bevel. There's no way you can make a cut without chatter. If you were to use a Scandi grind with, the, um, uh, with a micro bevel, you've got more chance of, yeah, so you could just about take a cut like this, but you've not really got much in the way of bevel support. I mean, you can, yes, you could, yeah, you could take a cut, but it's not really good. There's no, there's no guiding action from it. And uh, so that's not really going to be a lot of use. So we really want a bevel which matches the curve. Uh, this is an example of what would work very well. It's, uh, it's a tighter curve than the bowl because obviously if you eat, if you're carving out a spoon, there's going to be different. I mean, flat is flat. That's something you'd aim for, but with a spoon bowl, is going to vary so there's not one curve which is going to fit precisely but you can see that the fit here is pretty pretty good so you get a re decent amount of bevel support when you're making a cut however if you were to do this this would give you the maximum strength that is possible because you get a good thickness and good length but it would mean it's double-edged which uh, for a lot of spoon carvers they're not going to like that because push cuts along the back of a blade are quite nice so what i tend to do on my spoon blades is to I remove the back edge and I round that so there's a chance to push and you've got the nice this cutting action I also put a hollow in here which acts in the same way as the hollow on a Scandi grind um, so it isn't really hollow ground in the sense that the edge at uh, the edge it's hollow ground it's still flat across here but I've removed the center which just makes it easier to sharpen uh, the wood 
does not know about this hollow. It makes no difference to the actual quality of cut, but it makes the sharpening experience much easier. So that is how a spoon blade will cut effectively. Okay, so we've covered uh, curved blades uh, and hollowing out a spoon bowl. If you want to go deeper, then although some, some spoon blades will do it, to the cams for example, uh, the swan neck gouge which I've designed uh, is really good at this and I'll talk a little bit about the edge geometry behind that. So this is a, a cut out of the cross section of the blade and you can see that we've got clearance in the sort of swan neck portion of it which allows you to cut and have some degree of guiding with the bevel and you can get at least a halfway with that. Um, you don't need absolute guiding uh, with a swan neck gouge or with a gouge in general because you've got a big handle which you're providing support uh, and that's not that sort of support isn't present with a um, with a straight blade or a curved blade but the main thing is that the bevel again is largely uh, following the cut or at least providing clearance for the cut so one thing to look at is that I've got a there's a curve on the inside of this bevel which matches the outside, so we have a fairly constant thickness to the gouge. On some of the gouges you'll see, they haven't got this curved, curved bevel, and you can see that if you have a flat section on the inside, it has to affect, and a curved section on the outside, you have to have an effect where you have a weak spot. So it's much better if you can grind a bevel which actually matches the inside and outside. So that's one thing I've concentrated on. Uh, and we've got a series of um, wheels which allow you to grind a curved bevel rather than a, a flat bevel, which will uh, allow the blade to be stronger. And also it's easier to keep it sharper in that way. Okay, so that covers uh, straight blades, curved blades and gouges. Um, and wraps up this video really. Uh, I'm going to be doing another one on adzes and axe geometry because there's specific edge geometry I can talk about on those. But um, uh, that's it for now. Thank you.